Welcome to the fifth development log of Project Third Eye, VR. It has been another seven days and there are a few things that I can show you. So first of all, I whoop, changed the body collider. In previous versions it was parented to the head and that resulted in a problem when you want to grab something that is in front of a table or on a table or far away on a table because uh, you cannot put your head over the table because the collider then will push you back. And I basically fixed that a little bit by putting it onto the character model. Onto the character model. And uh, yeah, that worked really nice actually. So uh, it now feels a lot more natural. Very nice. So the next thing I want to talk about is a problem that I've been fixing. A problem that I've fixed with my uh, grab interaction framework and that problem was that uh, yeah, well let me describe the problem first so when you have a uh, velocity tracked object like this so we have the hand position as a target position and then we create forces to uh, manipulate the object in all three axes in position axes in position uh, same is true for all rotations <coughs> we add torque relative to the uh, target rotation and that's very fine if you have one hand defining both position and rotation that's uh, it works really well the problem comes into play when you have two hands because now you have two hands that want to define the target rotation so we have only one uh, hand that writes to the target rotation but now we have two hands that want to define the target rotation and also we have the position of both hands that want to uh, write to the target rotation. So um, the first the first approach to fix this is just to um, disable uh, rotation velocity, uh, torque tracking, whatever, um, on both hands when both hands are grabbed. So then you only have position tracking but on two spots on the object. So and then you can control the axes and the target rotation but there is one axis that is left over in this situation and this is the forward axis that cannot be described by only setting the position and uh, what you need to do is you have to define the axis in which this is the case and then turn the uh, rotation tracking off except for this uh, forward axis which is usually the long axis on the object but not every uh, object has a long axis, and uh, that's where the problem come with. That's where the problems come into play. But uh, on this object, I only write uh, torque on this forward axis, and the rest is described by the two positions of the hand. So and that's where it works really nice. So the problem uh, starts where you have an object like a cube for example because uh, where is the long axis on this cube it doesn't have a long axis so instead um, what I've been doing is um, I'm setting a transform parented to the object where the hand where the first hand is grabbed and then I make it look into the direction of the other hand and that uh, transform that uh, forward axis is pointing towards the other hand and then defines the axis where uh, the torque is applied to. So this axis, because it's always uh, where the both ha where both hands uh, are in line. That's always the axis where I can where I want to write the torque to. And the others, um, I don't want them to be affected by the torque. So that's why I can uh, rotate them. That's why I can rotate them by these by setting the position of the hands. So this feels. Jesus, I'm stuck. This feels very natural and uh, works really well. And also I've been fixing another bug. Uh, let's get back to the table first. And also I've been fixing another bug and that had to do with uh, the target position that is always parented to the object. And when I'm uh, grabbing at another position, I'm, I'm setting I'm resetting the target position and that resulted into a 
into a quick change in position of the target position and uh, in the derivative term which is basically just uh, the velocity so it's just change over time it caused a major leap at that when I re-grabbed something with the end and uh, that always caused some jittering when you were grabbing an object but uh, now I'm resetting the component and uh, that results into a very smooth grabbing behavior where there is no jittering. Very nice! Um, so that is fixed, that is fixed, it, it works really well now. And uh, the next thing I want, that I want to show you is this soft body. Well, I hope you can see this, how soft it is. So um, that's a soft body asset that, that I've been working on a few months ago. Uh, it's available on Unity, in the Unity Asset Store. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a soft body. It has uh, eight physics vertices. It's a cube, so uh, it has 24 vertices uh, defining the mesh, defined in the mesh filter, but uh, it has eight physics vertices, and that's why it's relatively cheap to compute. I hope you can see this. So let me uh, get the, oh, let me take the camera. Yeah, so the camera is targeting the head, so that's one uh, getting close to the object. Oops. Yeah, so I hope you can see this. It uh, jiggles around. It's relatively cheap, as I said. So uh, I don't really know what to do with this. Uh, really useless, actually. But uh, I will leave it on the table. So um, maybe you want to play around with this soft body um, or have some good ideas what to do with this soft body physics. <coughs> uh, leave a comment if you have a good idea. So the next thing is uh, this um, uh, balloon gun. So uh, you might know this from Boneworks. It's just uh, that you shoot at a rigid body and it then creates a uh, balloon and uh, with a string and this attaches a force to, uh, to the object. So uh, It's relatively easy to implement, but uh, I think it's, it's a lot fun to play with and uh, I hope you enjoy this feature. So, what else can I show you? Um, yeah, M4 in the air. So, and you also can, I hope you can see this, you can shoot these balloons when you're done with uh, levitating objects. So, the next thing I want to show you is um, the uh, thing that I want to show you is destructible objects. So uh, let me get in another M4 very quick. So um, it's called Rayfire. I got this from the Unity Asset Store. It's a uh, it's uh, an asset that I bought. It's relatively uh, expensive, but it's, it's a very good effect and it really adds value to this application. So if you shoot a few times on this box, it uh, at some point, so you apply damage to this object, and at some point it's, it starts to break. I think this is a very cool effect. And uh, I'm just starting to experiment with this feature. And also this tower is destructible as well. At the moment it's only these boxes, but uh, other objects will follow in the future, uh, I promise because it's, it's just, it looks so cool when, when it's properly done, when it's done properly. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is uh, destructible as well, but uh, now I want to show you uh, climbing, a little bit of climbing, because climbing also is a lot smoother uh, by now because of the box that I've fixed. It really feels a little, a little bit better now. And also for some reason, oh, where are you? Hello? Yeah, so, and for some reason, uh, these boxes got lighter. I don't know really, I don't really know why, but uh, they were 50 kilos the last time I've checked, but for some reason they appear to be a lot lighter now. Yeah, so the, let's get these M4s back. So, uh, two M4s and um, setting the camera up here and 
as you can see it's completely destructible very fun yeah so another thing that I can show you is this uh, jumping bar really quick so in, in a previous version uh, if you have grabbed it at the very end it would completely freak out and uh, now it behaves a lot more natural which I think is very uh, a lot better so uh, let's try this very quick so whoop oh, yeah. almost worked well but you get the point it, uh, it can lift you up in the air. And also, um, I changed uh, the hands. I changed the hands. Uh, don't mind this uh, absolute horrible walking animation. I will fix that later. <laughs> um, so uh, the hands, in previous versions, you can lose your hands. And that's when uh, the hand is uh, on the other side of a wall, and then you start walking, and the hand will just stick at that position because it's physics based. But uh, now there is a threshold of uh, 0.4 meters and you can push through the wall. If, if, it, if the distance is too great, it will just reset the position, which I think uh, is better than uh, losing your hand. Yeah, what else can I show you? I can show you this. So I've been adding a few sounds, like uh, up there, there are wind sounds, so a lot of background noise to uh, increase the sense of immersion. Uh, in this virtual reality application, which I think is the whole point of this thing. Uh, yeah, it feels more natural to hear something. And uh, I don't know if you can hear this. Oh yeah! Um, I've added sounds to some objects. I've been uh, starting to add sounds. Got a few other sounds. I think this, this has sound as well. Yeah. Oh Jesus, are you fine? Uh, this has sound as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's it with sound. But uh, all these other objects will follow to make it more immersive. I think sound is a very uh, it's a key component to uh, this whole thing. Um, now I got the physics done, more or less. Now it's... Uh, it's time to add more atmosphere and to polish the whole thing, to make it more user-friendly and all that. Well, I think that's all I can show you at the moment. Uh, stay tuned for the next development vlog in about seven days or so. Uh, I hope I can see you in the next video. Write a comment if you have some suggestions what I can add to this uh, game. Yeah, that's about it. A new setup.